uh, my next guest is a married mother. She comes from Leeds and she's from a white middle class British family. Very ordinary. You're probably not somebody you'd expect to have spent time at a terrorist training camp, but that's exactly what happened to Anne Singleton after being brainwashed by an extremist group. And she joins me now. It's really good to see you. And I can't believe how your life has changed so much, you know, from the life where you grew up and the road that you were supposed to travel and then to what you are now. Right. It's extraordinary, isn't it? How did you get involved with this group in the first place? Well, it was in the late 70s and I nice. uh, went away to college, to Manchester University, to study English. I had an Iranian boyfriend. Right. And um, it was just after the revolution. There was a lot of um, activity going on. In fact, this, 1979 was quite a, a, a political year. Mm. Um, Margaret Thatcher had just been uh, elected. And so when I went into the student union, um, there were groups of students from every corner of the world almost right. uh, talking politics. But the only group which really seemed to be um, active, actually doing things like mm. holding demonstrations and meetings, were the Mujahideen. Right. Uh, and I guess because... I had already um, an introduction through my boyfriend. Mm. I, so you were kind of drawn to that? Drawn you were, you were drawn to that. Yes. And that's right, you know, demonstrations were happening, but it got more sinister. In a way, it was almost like a cult, wasn't it? Because they really did, they really did brainwash you. It was a cult, mm. um, something I didn't find out until I Well, left. you never know when you... Uh, uh, exactly. Absolutely. You don't know when yes. it's actually happening, and it's yes. gradually, gradually, slowly, slowly. I mean, they're very clever, you know, the way that they can manipulate people. Very manipulative, yes. And you're totally unaware that what you think are just very sincere and very self-sacrificing people mm. are actually role modeling a kind of behavior to you right. which you get drawn into and, and it's that kind of behavior which you start to mirror and start mm. to take on for yourself. And what was the name of the group? What were they called? Because there's, ma there's many splinter groups, aren't there? What, what was this yeah. one? It's called the Mujah Mujahideen Akhal. Right. It's the People's Mujahideen of Iran. Right. Um, they're quite well known. Um, and you went out there as well. You actually went, you know, because it went from um, operating here and, you know, being shown videos and all of that stuff. But you actually went out. You went out there. They, they got me to the point where I accepted quite readily, quite enthusiastically to go to their military training camp in Iraq. Right. And what were you taught there? What, did, what, did, what, what sort of things did they teach you? Well, they taught me, um, there were about 50 of us uh, went together. The men and women were separated. Uh, we went to a place which was quite obviously an Iraqi military barracks. Mm. Uh, and they sent us on basic military training. So right. we did the usual marching and assault course training. We learned to drive trucks and we also were issued a Kalashnikov. Each. And, so we and did they tell you what all this was aimed at? What all this was, you know, what was this training and all of this? And you were showing videos of people blowing themselves up. What, what was given for the reason for that? Was there an end game, do you think? Well, uh, it's unbelievable to me now, but yeah. I knew full well that the end game was to take part in a military attack on Iran at some right. point in time. And I had been so indoctrinated and so, um, I had so submitted to their mm. indoctrination that I, I was prepared to go and do that. Extraordinary. How <laughs> did you get out? How, because, I mean, the, you know, many don't. Many don't. It was extremely difficult.